You know, I call myself an accidental entrepreneur. I actually qualified to be India's first female brewmaster. And I did that for over a year. In fact, I did it for a couple of years. Uh, and I really found that I was really not welcome into the brewing world in India. Nobody objected to it from my family. In fact, my father was very proud of the fact that I was uh, his daughter, the first woman brewmaster in the country. But then obviously the brewing world didn't think so. And I was all set to pursue it overseas when an accidental encounter with a, an Irish biotech entrepreneur who incidentally was also a brewer uh, in terms of his previous career and uh, he basically sought me out and said look I'm trying to set up a biotech company in India and would you like to partner me in this particular pro project and my first reaction to him was not me you know because a I'm a woman b I am not someone who has any business experience and three I have no money to my name but I think he basically felt that I was the right person and he pursued me and said look I don't think you should uh, you know demean yourself the way you are I see a lot of spunk in you and I think you can make a very good entrepreneur and that's how I started Biocon in 1978 it was very difficult as a woman uh, to cross a lot of credibility challenges that I faced. Um, I, as a woman and as a, a 21 year old woman when I started my company uh, with very little business experience, very little money in the bank, uh, I found it very difficult to get bankers to bank on me. Uh, you know, I found uh, that I was high risk in every sense of the word because bankers felt not only was I high risk as a, an inexper inexperienced young woman trying to set up a business but also that biotech was a sector they'd never heard of and they couldn't understand so they felt that was high risk. I couldn't get people to work for me because they felt I was high risk as an employer. They felt I couldn't give them job security as a woman employer. Uh, so I couldn't get professional people readily to join me. Um, I found it very difficult to even engage in business discussions with a lot of people I had to deal with to start my business. Many of them would say, why don't you send your manager? And I said, I am the manager. And they would really be very disappointed to know that I didn't have a male manager. So things like that, you know. So the first couple of years were very challenging, but it was fun. I took it on in a very amusing way as a challenge saying let me prove these innocent and you know ignorant minds uh, you know wrong and let the, let me educate them about what it's all about. But you know what I found and it I continue to find throughout my life's journey is that when you're very committed to something when you believe in something you can start getting a buy-in from believers and people who really start buying into what you're doing. So I think slowly but surely I started getting uh, some bold bankers to start bank, you know, supporting me and extending a credit line to me. Uh, I found some brave people who are willing to work for me. Uh, of course, they were almost retired folk who felt, you know, this was a good uh, sort of option for them uh, in their sort of twilight years to do something for this crazy young woman who's trying to start a business. So, you know, I, I did start up my business in that sort of uh, bootstrapped way. But I think the moment I started becoming successful in terms of, you know, building that business, creating products, exporting products, I started gaining a lot of credibility. Secretly, I've always been fascinated with medical science, pharmaceuticals. You know, I'm also a failed doctor because in my early years, I wanted to become a doctor and I didn't get into medical school. So I guess it was that sort of uh, 
you know, secretly I wanted to do something that brought me back into the medical world. So I started, you know, leveraging all the enzyme technologies to see whether we could produce uh, pharm biopharmaceuticals. And uh, lo and behold, we could. So we started pursuing that strategy. And today we are really, really focused on being an integrated uh, biopharmaceutical enterprise. And you know, we have global aspirations. So I think, you know, it's, it's a very fulfilling journey for me because I think um, we've leveraged this wonderful technology called biotechnology uh, in ways that have made a huge difference, not just to this country, but to many economies around the world. And not just to patients in this country, but to patients across the world. And I think India's forte is really about affordable innovation. And that is what my mantra is. And that's what I've been pursuing for all these decades. You know, as an entrepreneur, I have always believed in differentiation. I've always felt that you've got to be differentiated and different to stand apart. And if you want to do that, there is intrinsic risk because you're trying to do something that has never been tried before. Now, you know, the fact that I pioneered the biotech sector in India showed you that, you know, I was willing to experiment and take this big wild risk, uh, which nobody had attempted before. But I think risk is also about understanding what you're getting into. So it's not as if to say that I started a biotech company without understanding what I was trying to do. I think I understood the opportunity. It was about enzymes. You know, it was about using microbes to produce enzymes and enzymes in turn were wonderful, way, uh, you know, new tools uh, that one had as organic catalysts to do what chemicals were doing for you. So that concept to me was very exciting. And I said, why not work on that as a business concept? But you also know that you're taking a bet saying, I hope the science works. I hope this mechanism of action really works the way it's supposed to. And if it doesn't, that's what I mean by saying that you have to be able to understand that risk and then take risk mitigation steps that don't get you into a bigger risk that makes you fail big time. You know, you, you will fail and many failures lead to success at the end, provided you know what you're doing. I always tell people entrepreneurship is an endurance test and failing is temporary but giving up is final. So you know I always feel that you will have failures along the way and you are not an entrepreneur if you've never failed okay you're not a true entrepreneur if you haven't failed if everything goes hunky-dory then you're a very imitative entrepreneur. But if you're a true entrepreneur, you will take risks, you will experiment with new concepts and some of them will fail. But it is about a dream, it's about an aspiration, it's about realizing a vision. And that vision is what needs endurance. And you should never give up on that vision. So there are a number of women entrepreneurs, but they are running very small enterprises. So I agree with you that there are not enough women entrepreneurs or self-made women entrepreneurs who are running big businesses. And I think the reason there is that they are very diffident. I think society has made them very diffident. And I think society kind of uh, stigmatizes women and they slot women into a certain kind of a category. And women have never kind of, you know, moved out of that, that trapped kind of uh, impression that people have created of women. I know a lot of women who are actually running pretty sizable businesses, but they don't get noticed and they don't get written about too much. That's another problem. See, I think the media world is very fixated about male success stories. And they are not focusing enough on the female success stories. And then when they run businesses which are sort of stereotypical, like they'll say, oh, it's a garment industry. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, I know, I know a, a, a brother, sister, couple who are running a microbrewery. Okay. 
uh, then you know you'll say but you know we need to see something more serious than that so you know it's it's this constant kind of challenge that women have to get noticed i really think it's about your your own mindset okay i think women can do just about everything they choose to but you know what i find about women is either they are constantly defending why they can't do it or they find excuses why they can't do it or they keep complaining and whining about why they can't do things but i personally feel that if you are a strong confident woman who wants to pursue a very serious career you can and i've seen multiple examples you know i've got multiple examples in my own organization where you know women are handling their families and their careers extremely professionally just like a man would and i think it can be done and of course i would hasten to add that in these kind of situations the spouses must play a very supportive role because if they start believing that a woman's job is different and that her career comes second then there's a tough challenge for women and i see that as a societal problem so whilst i see a lot of women being able to address this i also see a lot of women who can't address it because they have huge family pressure societal pressure that doesn't make it so easy for them to pursue that